what a song, huh? The power of one. The theme today is to claim what is yours. Claim what is yours. It's available right now. And let me say a few truths that we know from metaphysical studies, from spiritual studies, from the mystics and our spiritual mentors, that there is only one. That God is all there is. And we are an individually, individualized expression of that one. That we are creators. That thoughts are things. And everything in our life is perfect just as it is right now. Did I have you until that one? Huh? Were you, you, were you doing okay until that one? But how, do you live by those truths? Because that's what's rightfully ours. There are truths about this world we live in. And when we let those be something that we can hold on to, our life unfolds in a beautiful way. Now, if spirit, if God was going to talk about that right now, he said, he would say, she would say, it would say, yes. The universe is inherently good and it's wired for your success. But, I didn't say it was easy. I did not say it was easy or comfortable. But it is meaningful. And that's what we are here to do, is to bring meaning to the life we've been given. We must claim those truths that I talk about as the as the North Star to our journey. And what's this journey, the self-discovery all about? I know I say it every Sunday, but our journey is really the journey to love. That's where it is. That's the truth of this journey. And if we can hold those simple truths as a a goalpost as a, a point, a, a point for us to shoot for, then we can make our lives meaningful and worthwhile. Now, we are creative beings. It's said in the Bible, in the beginning, God said, there will be light. And there was light. It is the word that has power. The word was with God and the word was God. That's how we have our power, is through our word. And we have the blessing of having Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. come next week. And I still practice those four agreements and I always forget one. And I can't remember the one I forgot, so don't ask me. But the one I want to talk about today is the one he starts with. He says it's the most difficult one to live your life by. And that's be impeccable with your word. But let me tell you what he means by that. It's a little different than you might think. Impeccable means without sin, which we know is an error, so I'm just going to say an error. Error begins with rejection of yourself. If we are an expression, an extension of God, of love, of goodness, of joy, then we reject ourselves. We're rejecting the divinity, the divine that created us also. He goes on to say we must take responsibility for ourselves without judging ourselves, without blame. And that is the correct use of this power we've been given. Didn't Jesus say it is the Father, it's God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom? But what do we do? We have to ask and it will be? Seek and you shall? I guess I don't talk about biblical quotes enough because we don't have these quite right, but they're close enough. Okay, knock and it will be the, and seek and knock and the door will be opened. Right, so we have to do our part. Now the problem comes... How many of you feel guilty? And I, this may not be going in the direction that most talks do, but how many of you feel guilty when you feel negative? I mean, be honest. I think as spiritual seekers, we all feel a bit guilty when we start feeling negative. But remember, life isn't meant to be easy. There are ups and downs in this world. Yes, we are worthy of all good, but how many of us feel worthy all the time? We are human beings. We're spiritual beings, but this human stuff gets in our way of our complete fulfillment, but we're on a journey. We're not at the end yet. 
It's not how many times you fall that matter. It's how many times you get up. Now, I don't know what any circumstance people brought in uh, today. I don't know where you are if you're on one of those upswings or downswings or where you are, but we're in it together. Now, I want to tell you, because we reject our good sometimes. It's right there for us, but we get caught up in limited thinking. My dear boyfriend Rumi says, Why are you so enchanted with this world when a mine of gold lies within you? Your heaven may be up there. Mine is right here. He goes on to say, what else can I say? You will only hear what you're ready to hear. Don't nod your head. Don't try to fool me. The truth of what you see, what you see is written all over your face. We have to, the thing we have to do is prepare our ears, prepare our eyes to see a bigger picture. So I'm going to tell you a story because we all have setbacks, right? I think you mentioned them pretty, some of those pretty well done this morning, but we, we all have setbacks. And I had an amazing week this week. Yes, there were challenges, but it was an amazing week. It's not like all weeks. It was an amazing week. Monday night, I was invited to spend some time with some dear friends in a beautiful home with an amazing dinner with talks of caring and love and appreciation. Doesn't get much better than that. Tuesday, I've been having some health imbalances, and they cause some exhaustion, and I've been trying to work on that, and I met with an absolutely amazing, loving, holistic doctor who's a member of our center, and she put me on some health program and helped me make sense of things, and that was such a loving gift, I can't even believe. I woke up Wednesday really tired, but that afternoon I had a very spontaneous opportunity to go to the Pacific Amphitheater with Deanna and Kirk and see Brandy, Brandy Carlisle, whom we love, and in her concert, and we had so much fun, and we parked way, 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 way too far away, and we got to walk and have fun in the whole situation. Amazing week, right, so far? Thursday, I get the beautiful opportunity I do every single week, uh, almost every every single week of meeting with our doctor of theology, our systematic theologian, to discuss spiritual ideas from Ernest Holmes. All of his books are all over the table, from the Bible, from mystics. And we get to eat a delicious lunch on top of that. So isn't that a pretty amazing week? I mean, it was a really amazing week filled with good stuff. And I woke up Friday morning, and I'm going to the physical therapist for an old injury in my neck that's, by choice, kind of stuck and I want to loosen it up. And I go in and all of a sudden, down. I was like, whoa, what just hit me? So I went and I, dang, I laid on the table. I had a beautiful uh, physical therapist rub my neck, give me some massage. Oh, darn. I mean, that's pretty tough. I was not good. I just went to do some stretches. And I said to the little assistant, I said, Josh, I'm just not in a good place today. And I could have cried right there. For what reason? I had no idea. I'm just not in a good place today. And I like to be a light being when I go places. I like to bring light and goodness. And that's what I want to do. I mean, that's my intention in life. And he was kind of, oh, that's okay. And he listened. And I said, I'm just, ah. So I did the work. But then here they put you on a table and my neck is in this really comfy traction thing. I've got heat on my neck and little tens unit. I'm lying there. I'm listening to the conversations about people's vacations, about people meeting with big families and having parties, about having exercise. And I said, my life is terrible. <laughs> I am so unhappy. And I'm sitting there and I just like, oh man, I just don't even like this life. Like, what's that all about? So, I want to tell you something. God has a sense of humor. So, they get me out of it and I'm just ready to, I don't know. I look down. I'm wearing, <laughs> I'm wearing my white t-shirt that has in giant red letters, Team Optimist. <laughs> I go, okay, <laughs> all right, get a grip, babe, get a grip. And you know, I think what we need is, 
We can't keep things hidden. So when we talk about be impeccable with your word, you've got to find people that care about you. To talk to, to share, to be honest with. Just don't keep hitting the repeat button. We have something that needs to be healed. If we're locked up in that space, so... If God were talking again, she would say, you got to be willing, you got to be open to want to feel good. You got to be open to want to feel good and not get stuck in the comfort of your story. Do you get what I mean? That's true. So when I'm driving home, I'm thinking, okay, I got to get over this thing. The phone rings and it's a psychic that had been here years ago that I haven't talked to in years. And I said, oh, hi because her name was in my phone and she said Sandy I'm sorry I couldn't get you out of my mind what is going on with you and I said well I haven't been feeling well and she goes oh well it's not your body that's the problem you've got some old beliefs that you need to get rid of and I said well I've been working on any of those she said not hard enough <laughs> I said, okay. I said, it was just so good. To, but to have somebody care about you and think of you, I just said, I think she got into some past life stuff, which if you don't believe in past lives, that's fine because there's this race conscious stuff. We can pick up race conscious stuff and plant it in our head and let it grow. We got to keep it weeded. We got to keep it weeded. So I said, I said, thank you. I thank you, thank you. She goes, fine, I'll, I'll check in next week. <laughs> Done, that was it. But yeah, wow, okay. I gotta get the, I get the, get the picture. I go in and some medical intuitive I'd been working with called out of the blue and just said, I was thinking about you. You see, what God is telling me is the universe has our back. We have to be open. The messages are there how to step on a bigger path. He said, okay, lie down. I mean, he lives in Colorado. We're on the phone. So, yeah, we're, no, no, on the phone. Um, lie down. He said, no, your body's fine. He said, you need, you need something bigger in your life. He said, write a book, but not a book book. Write a pamphlet of all your spiritual tools that you know how to use, something you can talk about. And that's all I have to say. I'll check with you next week. Bye. I said, okay, get out of my own way. Work on my stuff. Praise God and love life. We need to be willing to do something more to feel good. Now here's what one of my boyfriend's friends says. What happens when your soul begins to awaken your eyes and your heart and the cells of your body to the great journey of love? First, there is wonderful laughter and probably precious tears and a hundred sweet promises of how you're going to be, what you're going to do, how you're going to live, you know, knowing these new truths. And those heroic vows that no one can ever keep. I vow never to be unhappy again. I vow always to think good thoughts. I vow, I vow. But still God is delighted and amused. You once tried to be a saint. You once tried to be a saint. Don't give up. Remember, it's not how many times we fall. It's how many times we get up. The universe is always working for us. Messages come in other people's voices. They come in books. They can come on the radio through a song, through a television. They can come in books you read. They can come anywhere. But life is for us and never against us. Now, coming back to the chocolate muffin. <laughs> We need to find our own worth. I'd say that's that little stuff on the top. We need to say, I matter. I'm good enough. I matter. I'm good enough. And right now, no matter what's going on in my life, it's okay. Will you just say that with me? Right now, no matter what's going on in my life, it's okay. It's getting better because I'm going to make it so. We've got to do our part. If we claim our good, we can't just expect it to happen. Remember, life isn't easy. It's meaningful. We've got to make it work. So, we also need to recognize each other's worth. How did the rose ever open its heart and give the world all its beauty? It felt the encouragement of light, the encouragement of light, 
the encouragement of light against its being. Otherwise, we all remain too frightened. Will you close your eyes and let's just conclude with a prayer on that note about claiming our good, finding our center. As Marian Woodman said, if we do not know ourselves, we cannot stand in our own truth and therefore are in constant danger of invasion by others. We must find our own truth. So I'm just going to invite you in this moment to absolutely jump in, immerse yourself, dive into the center of the universe, into that soft place, the center of that beautiful muffin that's there for us, just surrounding us in the spiritual substance of love, of goodness, of joy, of power and possibility, knowing this substance is waiting to be formed by our own thoughts and ideas. We can hear it by saying, you matter, you're good, life is good, we're for you, we're here. And as we immerse ourselves in that infinite goodness right now, we feel strengthened and empowered and, in, in center, and centered in feeling the light of God's love and goodness right inside of us. And as we allow all the other chatter, all of the other chatter to slip away, we feel that light, that power, that is God, that is good, that is creativity, just expanding in our life, that we may be filled with the light, the warmth, the goodness, the love, the healing, the prosperity, the health, that is God, that is good, that is joy. We're filled with it now, in this moment, and we allow it, as we fill with it, to spread it out into our world, knowing that we are one. We belong to the goodness in ourselves, to the spark of divinity in ourselves, and we belong to each other. Right here, right now. And so it is. What this week has taught me is I am the luckiest woman in the world because my life is filled with love. And so it is. I thank all of you for being part of that. I bless you. I know that all of you have what you need right here and now that we may celebrate this world. We can say, Hallelujah, God. I, ha I am here. I am willing. I am available. And it is done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is.